It's time to go deep. How deep, you say? Well, 14 teams. I'm picking at number 13. I'm going to start with the big fella, well, the small fella, who's also a big fella, Trey Young. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball, on TikTok at RedRock underscore B-Ball, and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free. We are available on all platforms. So, the first 12 picks are done. This season, I'm going to go a couple of extra. We're going to go to 14. So, two 14-team mock drafts here, and then this series is over. What is coming up for next week? I hear you ask, or maybe not, but I'm going to tell you anyway. We're going to do some Category League must drafts and do not draft shows. Take them with the grainiest of grains of salt. We're going to do an ADP and rank chain show. We're doing the live. I haven't even promoted this at all. 4.30 p.m. Monday, Eastern Time. Three hours, live, answering your questions. Me and about 10 other fantasy guests and team experts answering your questions. Live, YouTube, 4.30 p.m. Monday. That's coming up. Doing a show on something called Value 30. Doing some deep sleepers. I'm doing a couple more mock drafts, a points mock draft, an auction mock draft, uh, another 12-team mock draft, a perfect team, um, uh, award predictions, season win predictions, lineup rotations, and um, starting groups for the East and Western Conference, preseason takeaways. Holy shit, it is a big week coming up. So, and whatever, whatever li- if I have any live drafts for leagues that I'm in that aren't slow drafts, I will do those as videos as well. I won't talk very much during them, but at the moment, all of the leagues I'm in are slow drafts. So I don't know if I will have any quick drafts that I can put up. We'll see. But if I do, they will go up um, like I've done the last couple of years. So that is all coming up. So we're going to get into it really soon. But today is a mock draft. I'm picking at 13, head-to-head nine categories. I'm excited. But I'm not as excited as I am to tell you that today's episode is brought to you by Fangio. Snap into action this NFL season with Fangio, America's number one sportsbook right now. New customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. So I've been telling you about FanDuel for a while now. I've been telling you about the Dolphins and about Tua Tagovailoa and about how he's going to win the MVP and the Dolphins are going to win the Super Bowl. And you can bet on all of that at FanDuel. But we've got NBA preseason. I don't know if these games are even going to be on by the time you've uh, watched this show, but let's have a look. The Blazers are four and a half point underdogs in the preseason. Are they going to be good against the Jazz? I don't know. Betting on the preseason is tough, but if you can find an edge, you can do it. But they've got all the futures for the NBA as well. So when I do season wins and award numbers, we're going to be referencing FanDuel a lot because they are, of course, America's number one sportsbook. Go to FanDuel.com slash locked on now. Kick off the NFL season. Screw that. Tip off the NBA season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. And don't forget to gamble responsibly. We... uh, We might as well get cracking into this mock and 14 teamer. It's going to be deeper. We're going 14 rounds, 14 teams. So we're going, how much extra does that take us into the draft? Almost to 200 players. That's exciting. We'll get into it right now. All right. We are ready to go. Let's swing into this 14 team, nine category head to head mock draft. Hey, if you are watching this, um, anyone want a roto draft? I've done one ages ages ago, but I know there's a smaller amount of people um, interested in roto drafts. But maybe we can sneak one in this week. So let me know whether you want one. I'm picking all the way down at 13. Hoopdex is at number one. The big fella. Hoopdex got some good stuff. He got a new uh, fantasy website you can check out as well. So uh, check out his stuff too. Um, nice nice, nice site. Love to see all the fantasy sites and channels and podcasts proliferating at the moment. Um, it's great just to have more content out there all the time and different thoughts and different opinions. I'm always going to appreciate everyone being here and watching this. And I want everyone to watch this show. But I love having a bunch of different people and a bunch of different voices around. We're live. Hoopdex, you are on the clock, my guy. 
after I just talked you up. Yes, there you go. Jokic. Gugu on my wrist takes him bead. Ryan. I wonder if anyone in here is actually going to have any difference in their strategy, given that it is a 14-team league. Shea goes at three. Nurkic Circus at number four. I know he's a trailblazer legend. I don't think he's going to be taking Dame Lillard, though. What's he going to do? It's got to be Halliburton, I'm guessing. Doncic, interesting. Okay. Tom LeCarin. Tom is a massive um, massive Twitter responder. Loves the loves the old Twitter, Tommy. And uh, yeah, good for you, Tom. Good to see you in here. I haven't seen you in one of these yet. Tried to make it so that everyone was... Um, Try uh, new people in here as much as possible. There might be some double ups. I'm just trying to get different people into these mocks. Wow. Casey goes with Giannis at six. Huh. Curry at seven. So Tatum's falling to eight. That is different. I, I get why you have some concerns over Tatum. I do understand that. I just haven't seen it play out like this. Davis at eight. Holy shit. Tavis, Tatum's falling to nine. Wow. Let's go. Um, Josh probably said that's early for Giannis, but doesn't mind. Um, yeah, you're right. I, I don't mind. That's fine. LaMelo goes at 10 after Tatum at 9. It's just interesting to see these changes. I did my mock yesterday with Davis at 12, and he goes at 8 here. Durant goes at 11. Someone's falling. Lillard. Lillard's falling. Drift to Spence. You got a nice little Lillard gift there. Is that what you're going to do? You're going to take him, or you're going to do something different? You're going to take Ant. No, nah, it takes Lillard. Good work. Let's take Trey, and then uh, SD Fucky. I assume that's how you pronounce it. He will be making the selection at 14. Tom, try, still trying to predict what I'm going to say, mate. This is not a pretty standard draft at all. Because Giannis went at six. Davis at eight. Tatum at nine. Um, SD Faki, come on. You're in here. Make your pick. I saw you. I talked to you before. Don Mitchell at 14. Don Mitchell at 14. 14 is an interesting spot. Hmm. <laughs> By the way, if you are a point C person watching this, do not consider Don Mitchell at 14. Bad pick. Bad pick. Uh, Devin Booker. Wow. Okay. So I've got, what do I do here with Trey? I, no, no. What are we going to do? We, I haven't done this in, I haven't got him in many drafts. Let's do Sabona here. Really strong punt blocks guy. Cause he helps you with field goals and rebounds and helps with assists too. Now he's not a great point scorer, but we're taking Sabonis there. Interesting position. So Irving goes next, which is pick 17. Harden, what's people's thoughts on Harden? He can very easily be a player around this turn. There's just too much uncertainty with him at the moment, I think. I don't think he's going to sit out swathes of games, but also, I don't know what it's going to be like if he is in LA. Could he be the 25th player in LA? I, I honestly don't know. Harden goes 19, Edwards 18. This is, again, I just I hate this area. I hate the second round. We've got you know three three rounds worth of third round players, I feel like. Like Edwards is a third rounder. Kyrie with his schedule is a third rounder. Sabonis probably is a second. Booker probably is a second. Mitchell's probably more back end second, but I don't know, man. It's just tough. And there's because of all the Butler, Kawhi, Paul George, Harden type stuff. I don't really think Mikhail Bridges is a second rounder, but he's going to go there. And there he goes at twenty one. Jimmy Butler goes at twenty. Mikhail goes at twenty one. Will we see Weman Yama in round two here? 100% we will. I am almost convinced he's going to go in round two here. He looked awesome yesterday. I have bumped his projections up um, on Basketball Monster. I wasn't certain of what level of usage he would get, but he's doing stuff that's just unbelievable already in two preseason games. It's stuff that I just I can't believe that I'm watching it. Oh, there he goes at 20, uh, 23 for Weman Yama. Yep. This is going to be the case. I think the problem is just going to be A, how many games does he play, and B, let the, honestly, that's it. Like, I, I'm not worried about his production at all. Although, I do think there'll be some efficiency issue nights for women Yama. Cade goes at 24. Towns goes 25. Um, at a bio, 26. What's, what are they talking about? Punt free throw team. That's early for Vic. It, I don't think it is. I think he's going to go earlier than this. I think women Yama, by this time next week, three days before the season, he's going to be a top 20 player. I'm pretty convinced that'll happen. Adebayo, Jaron Jackson. Oh, I like that spot for Jaron at 27. That's pretty good. Um, and then we go hoop decks to finish up round one. I would be taking Paul George here. But I'm not hoop decks, am I? You know what I had this morning for breakfast, which I don't ha have usually, because I don't have them here. I have to go to like a specialty confectionery store. I had a Pop-Tart, and it's like sitting in my mouth weirdly. 
Yeah, I don't like that. Hoopdex gets Paul George right on the buzzer, as he should have. It's the right pick, I think. All right. That Rolex Leo team got Steph and Kawhi. That could pay off in a huge way. It could be really, really strong. I don't want to pick on Dirty Dirty with this selection. He said, I had to go with Bridges for my second since I took AD in the first. Now, he said LOL, so of course that means you're laughing. But I think that's just playing into some wrong stuff. Again, if your idea of drafting Bridges is the fact that he's never missed games before, that's and that's your reason, I just think it's going to come unstuck for you. Because we could have said the same about Towns. We could have said the same about Jokic, who missed 13 games last season. We could have said the same about so many different players. But it doesn't always work that way. So, tiebreaker? Sure. The main reason? No. I don't agree with that. Anyway, let's go. Oh, we're going to get the, the blocks are going to fly now. Look at this. Wemby, Jackson, Mobley, Porzingis, all gone in the last seven picks. So, after Paul George went to end round two, it was Siakam, Evan Mobley, Porzingis, and then Darren Fox goes at 32. Fox has got such a wide range. He could go at 30. He could go at 50. And I wouldn't argue with any of those, I don't think. Interesting to see that Van Vliet, Garland, and Markin are still on the board. Well, Van Vliet just goes at 33. I'm recording this as the Pelicans-Hawks preseason game from Saturday is on. They went with a very interesting starting line. They put Jalen Johnson back to the bench. He's still playing well. But they started Anyeka Okongwu next to um, lob threat legend Bruno Fernando. Okongwu is taking more threes this season. And he, yeah, I'm pretty excited to see what he's going to do. I don't think they'll go Okongwu and Capella together a lot, but man, Okongwu is a guy that I had a ton of faith in in that draft class. Obviously, he hasn't had the opportunities yet. I'm still really, really high on him. I'm very interested to see what happens. Marketing goes 34. The headmaster goes at 35. I had a dream about Jamal Murray last night. Not in that way, but sort of in that way. DeJounte Murray goes in 36. And I'm just going to leave it there. You can infer whatever you want from that. Got to have fun while we're doing mock drafts. We have fun, don't we? Yeah, we have fun. DeJounte goes at 36. Good steals from him in that game for the Hawks, but it feels like, I haven't watched it because I'm recording this, everyone was just getting turnovers. It's like Griffin had four steals and Bogdanovich had three and someone else had three when I looked at like half time. It was just steals everywhere. Dirty says, interesting Jamal pick. Is it? I think it's totally reasonable. Des Bain goes 38. Bain... I took him at like 21 and 22 in some drafts, and I don't always agree with that, but he's falling a lot. Why is Jamal an interesting pick? I don't get it. I don't get what the holdup, what the concern would be, but I better start concentrating on whatever it is I'm doing. Oh, Chet goes at 39. Okay. What should I do with this pick? Brunson? Or do I want to... No, I I do need assists. Levine? Brunson? Brunson is a better assist guy. He... Yeah. Let's do Jalen. Um, oh, LeBron goes. I, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to take LeBron in any draft. I'm going to take Brunson here. I'm not 100% convinced of him with some of the lack of defensive stats, but look at my three guys here. <laughs> like they're, they're not getting defensive stats. They are not. I'm just going to look. Where's my... Hmm. At 35, I think it's too early. I don't think it's too early in the slightest for Jamal Murray. But again, it's good to have differing opinions in here. There's a bunch of these guys. DeJounte, Jamal, Garland, Bain, Brunson, Levine, Van Vliet, Fox. They're all squished into this area. Levine at 42 from you is a good pick. Miles Turner at 43 is a good pick. So what does my team do? Let's... Actually, what do we do? I might... 20 seconds left. Um, I want to lock in some rebounds. So I'm going to take Dominating here. All right, let's get Dominating. Oh, that smells a lot, doesn't it? It doesn't feel nice to take DeAndre Ayton. But oh, look how... If you can see my roster on the screen here on the left, look how spread out it is. Point guard, guard, power forward, center. No shooting guards, small forwards, which generally you can populate later on. Walker Kessler, 45. <clears throat> I thought Josh would go pool there. Yeah, I, I considered it, right? But it's not always about, do I have this player ranked ahead of this other guy every time? It's not always about that. I was looking at it going, it's 14-team league. I know how rebounds fall off late in the draft. 
I know I'm punting blocks. Aiton helps me with scoring field goals, rebounds. Just getting that player onto my team, I think, is a valuable archetype at this point in the draft. And then I can get some other scoring, hopefully, with my next picks. Because my scoring was is pretty good at the moment. And my assists were pretty good. Wow, look at that. And this is also why. Turner goes, then Aiton, then Kessler, then Claxon, then Vooch. See? The centers fly. Jordan Poole goes next at 48. That's part of... Because I, if I didn't get a big man here with that pick with Aiton, getting reliable... Is Aiton reliable? I don't know. But getting that sort of level of big man in my next couple of picks, which don't come around for a while, is... Uh, it's a little tough to do. It is a little tough to do. DeRozan goes 49. Beal goes at 50. Hopefully we get to see Beal in the preseason. Too. Rolex Leo, I like what you're doing. Curry, Kawhi... Jamal and Beal. There is some risk with the age of three of those guys, but strong otherwise. Strong. Jalen Brown goes at 51. Um, Zion at 53. Shangun 52. Okay. So Shangun's value is pumping up a little bit at the moment. <coughs> Fair enough. My thing with him is always how does how do the Rockets treat him? But you know, it's been positive so far. It's been positive so far. Drew at fifty four. When are we going to get the Giddy Jalen Williams grouping? My next pick's not till sixty nine. Yeah. Today I am also going to release a pick fourteen mock draft. So taking uh, taking it on the turn. Drew goes 54. What other options? Oh, Brennan Ingram. So his range is pretty wild as well. This should be an Anobi territory, I would guess, for hoop decks. But he was unless he doesn't want to take two Torontos in a row, I wouldn't worry about that. But maybe he doesn't want to do that. Franz Wagner. Tyrese Maxi. I'm always ending up with Maxi. I don't think he's going to slide to me at 69, but I would absolutely enjoy it if he did. What I'm targeting with 69 is one of Simons and Hero to get some um, points, threes, free throws, assists. We'll see how that works, though. Ananobi goes, and that is the end of round four. That's pick 56 done. So we are four rounds in, and my team is good in points. They're good in rebounds and assists, good in field goals, good in free throws. Need to work on my threes and steals now. Maxi 57, well, I'm obviously not getting him. So I need some threes and steals. Luckily, at this point, they're relatively abundant. They're the two most abundant categories left. That won't always be the case, but they usually are. So that's why I can leave them a little bit later to concentrate more on. And it is true that when you get threes and steals later on in the draft, those guys can be detriments to other categories. But the idea is, or my theory is, is that when you build up those other categories earlier on, then you get steals and threes later, you can afford to take that hit because you've built them up with earlier picks. But if you do get the guys that give you little bits of other categories with some steals and threes, and then towards the end of the draft, you then try to add more steals and threes, perhaps, then those other categories haven't been built up high enough. Brook Lopez, 59. Randall, 58. Giddy, 60. Some people are having some reactions here. Brook Lopez, 59. Is it too early for me? Yeah. It doesn't, like, wildly shock me, though. It doesn't... Yeah. It's not a wild shock to see him there. I don't think he's got any chance of repeating what he did last season, but I'm not super surprised. Gideon Barnes might be the next um, Gideon Jalen Williams pairing, although I am shocked. The Bronco actually is going to be my massive target if he gets to me at 69. But I don't know if he will. Gobert goes 62. That Gobert, that's a Giannis, Wemby, and Gobert team. Wow. That guy has got his blocks looking pretty sexy, I would say. That's our Casey. Yeah, he's going to have some pretty good block numbers now. But the bubble ring's got some good blocks going as well. Jarrett Allen goes at 63. It's just perfectly fine. Like, it's not super high upside. It's not terrible downside. It's just fine. He's just one of the more uninspiring mid-round picks, I think, at the moment, Jarrett Allen. The injury's not helping, clearly. Paolo goes 64, a very controversial pick because he has not improved his percentages so far in preseason. He has improved defensive stats. But expecting all four of those things, steals, blocks, field goals, free throws to improve in one offseason was tough. But two of them have looked better. It's a good start. It is hard. It is very hard, though, to 
um, be in the right position with Palo. But when you've got Bridges and DeRozan, that is a good free throw little boost there. Oh, the Bronco goes at 65. That is somewhat disappointing, but not completely, not completely unexpected. Uh, okay, so looking at my team, I do want to get some scoring in here because that is going to disappear very fast. That's why Simons and Hero are going to be on my list. Let's throw Tyler there. I'll throw Jeremy Grant. Well, Tyler Hero is gone. Let's throw Jeremy Grant onto the list. Kuz, maybe? Vassell, maybe? thought Vassell looked pretty good yesterday. Franz Wagner goes at 67. Um, let's throw Jabari Smith on the queue just in case. Same with Gafford. Simons goes 68. So that is unbelievably annoying that both Simons and Hero just both went. So that is going to put us into the... I'm very annoyed territory, but... Oh, man, that is annoying, actually. Hmm. Um, I'm going to take Jeremy Grant there, and I don't really feel good about it. I wanted, oh, I wanted one of those two blokes, and Maxi. All three of them went in this round. That's really frustrating. Really frustrating. So, what is the next one then? Oh, jeez. Do I? I don't want a big shot blocking big. I do. I take a Congo. Cam Johnson goes next. A Congo is a shot blocking big, but is he? For the rebounds? Ugh. Cam Johnson goes to finish round six. Do I take Mark Williams? Who's at least got a more secure role than a Kongwu? Pirtle goes 71. Oh, no. What am I doing here? Uh, Vassal. Vassal? Vassal. Devin Vassal. 72. That's... Okay value there. There was a lot I wanted there. Williams, Okongwu, Vassell, Reeves, Kuzma, Fultz, Wendell was an option. Jabari is probably too early. But my next pick's at 97. I am not getting any of those players in my queue. I've only got three there at the moment. Kuzma, Rozier, and Smith. They are not coming back to me. There is no way. I'm going to throw Scoot into the queue, but he won't come back either. I'll throw Jalen Green in there as well because as a very, very poor man's, Simons and Hero type player. Maybe I'll get Wendell, though. The other thing interesting yesterday is Jeremy Sohan started a point guard. Will that continue? I'm not sure, because we still haven't seen Keldon Johnson play in preseason, but they started Sohan at point guard, even with Keldon not there. That gives me an indication that it's at least 50-50 that Sohan starts over Trey Jones. Now, Keldon Johnson said multiple things in the media about coming off the bench. I don't know. But that is that is something to watch with Sohan. And if Sohan is their point guard then his value does improve. He gets undrafted in most drafts, and he shouldn't. He should always, he's always on my roster or my queue as a guy to grab in the last rounds, but I don't usually pull the trigger. I will now. Jarmarant got auto-picked. Cool. Wendell at 76. That's earlier than I usually see him go. I'm not hating it. I'm also surprised to not see uh, Ben Simmons at this point. He's been rising up. And I think Scoot's going to go pretty soon here. Also, a little bit shocked to see Jabari not off the board. Yeah, that's good for Kuz. 77 is a good pick. Really enjoy that from for Kuz. It's very hard picking at the end of the first round in one of these drafts. Um, Rolex Leo. Just sort of just hitting the mid. This is getting to Chris Middleton value territory and absolute Terry Rogier territory. But again, there's no way he's coming back to me. I still need a small forward eligible player. Although Vassell is small forward eligible, but he's also my only shooting guard eligible player. Clay Thompson, 78, just fits perfectly with that team. Just old as shit. It fits perfectly. There is some value in that. I wouldn't say that all of those have been significant value picks, though. Kuzma at 91 is crazy. Well, he didn't go at 91. He went at 77. So I'm not really sure what's going on there. Rogier went at 79. Okay, that's pretty good. Chris Paul at 80. He went way later than that in one of the ones we did yesterday. And I'm very surprised that Simmons has not gone. He is going to go soon. I'm th I ha He has to. I think he has to go on this team. This Doncic, Zion, Giddy team. That's a Simmons team if I've ever seen one. Or is it a Draymond team? No, it's a Simmons team. <clears throat> it's got to be a Simmons team. Come on. No, it's a Middleton team. Interesting. Okay. 
Let's see if he swings back around there, Nurkic Circus, and goes with him in that direction. Fultz goes at 82. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. Sometimes I draft Fultz and they'll get someone say, man, you're sleeping on Fultz, or someone else will say, man, you're so you're way too high on Fultz. Mate, that probably means I'm in the right spot if I'm in the middle of where everyone, where people, or, or on the middle of the extremes, I guess. Um, Fantrax doesn't say the number of the pick. It does. In this chat, you are typing in. Andy Wiggins goes at 83. McCollum goes at 84. That's okay for CJ. It's not perfect. It's not... Well, just quickly, just quickly. Why is a Kongwu not gone? Let's throw him into the queue. Will he make it back to me? No chance. And Scoot hasn't gone either. Wow, interesting. And no Simmons. I know I'm just harping on Simmons. And no Tyus. Who decks really? Oh, here it is. He takes Simmons on a Jokic team. So, Hoopdex's team had a pretty strong free throw at 80, 81. What does Simmons do to that? That is the question. It drags it, but it's, you know, and he added McCullum as well. So, he was really strong and added two bad free throw guys. Badish. CJ's badish. Simmons is bad. Reeves at 86. He would have been a good one to come back around. My team's points are looking very strong. My assists are very strong. I believe I am leading everybody in those two categories. Now, I'm second in assists, sorry. And second in points. My bad. Scoot at 87. Okay. Well, we've seen him go 15, 16 spots higher than that. I hope the Simmons pick doesn't get roasted. Bro, it's totally good. Like, I, I've, I've been advocating for Simmons inside the top 100 for a long time. A Kongwu 88, really good. In fact, I don't think there's really any picks here that have deserved roasting. Nothing has looked stupid to me. Nothing has looked... Not not stupid. Nothing has looked um, completely antithetical to the way I would approach things. I would say most picks have been sort of bang on the right area. Does that mean they're going to be all right? Of course it doesn't. No way. But I also think that everything has been easily rationed. Rationed? Rationalized in the right spots. Tyus Jones at 90, Draymond 91, Nurkic 90... One, I said Nurkic 91, Tyus 90. Nurkic has looked good in preseason. It's all about health. People just assume Nurkic was dis- disgustingly bad. And as you're well aware, Nurkic president, Nurkic fan club president over here, I know that he's not bad. It's more been uh, some scheme stuff I thought with Chauncey early on, and then, of course, health. Duran goes at 92. How far is Rob Williams going to fall? Because I seem to let him fall 30 spots, 40 spots, and end up with him on my team. And I don't have him projected particularly aggressively. Is there a chance J, J, Jalen, I was going to call him, Jabari Smith falls to me? Yeah. Marcus Smart, 93, great value. Toby Harris, 94, pretty strong. Two picks away. Can Jabari get to me? That would be pick 97. Is that too early? Maybe. I've been encouraged with him in preseason quite a bit. The other one for me here is going to be Zach Collins or Michael Ponder Jr., and Sohan is going to be just slotted into my queue as well. Asar Thompson goes at 95. Round seven is putting a lot of faith in Asar. I would be okay with taking him at 95 in a 12-teamer. 95 in a 14. Wow, okay. So I can get Jabari Smith here. I'm not sure how I feel about it. I think I'm going to just do it. Let's just do it. Huh. Just take a little bit of an upside play. And I think also, when you're picking towards the end of a round, you've got to take some more swings. On the turn, you've got to take swings. But towards the end, you've got to take more swings when you don't have the advantage of Jokic, Shea, and Embiid at the top. Especially in a 14 team where I'm taking Trey Young as my best player. I've got to hope some guys hit, which is what I'm sort of hoping with Vassell and Smith. that They could maybe jump 30, 40 spots. At least 40 spots combined. Zach Collins, 98. What do I do next? What is my team looking at now? Points and threes with field goals. But oh, that's, Mag- that's Michael Ponder Jr., isn't it? I haven't drafted Ponder in any draft, I don't think. Capella also available still. I don't think I want him, but I'm going to take Ponder, I think. SD Facky letting it run down. He goes Mitchie Robinson at 99, which if it 
it's what you need. It's what you need. He's gone. Look at those blocks. Turn up, Pirtle, Zach Collins, Mitch Robinson. We are going to think about it and take Michael Ponder Jr. At that spot at number 100. Is there upside in that? A little bit. But I also just wanted someone to give a bit of stability, get me some scoring and threes in there too. Which is obviously what Ponder brings. We are getting to the stage though where rebounds now are tough. Assists are very tough too. But I'm sitting okay with those. Jalen Green, 102. That's actually pretty strong, I think. D'Angelo Russell should start to go. I'm just going to put him in the queue. I don't think he's going to make it back. I will be looking at Sohan at my next pick. That is who I want. But it's 125. And it's round nine. So this is the area normally where we start to see Lively or Amen Thompson or Jaden Hardy or Bilal Kalabali or any of those flyers, Kobe White. Will people take the flyer still when we're in round eight? Johnny Collins goes at 104, Russell at 105. That's the major strategy change for me is I'm not taking those upside flyers in round eight to be my eighth best player. Like Derek Lively is probably not going to be that. Could Kobe White be that? Sure, theoretically. But my confidence in that is not particularly high. Valanciunas is, should be high property. High property? That's the wrong word. Should be high, highly valued around this area because the rebounds are going to go away. Him and Steven Adams are the two rebound guys at the left, I believe, if I just quickly look at my list. Oh, Rob Williams as well. And after that, you could, Rolex Leo takes Miles Bridges. gets auto-picked. Uh, did you want to do that? Are you in the room? I might reverse that. Just... Was going to pick Mather and ran out of time. I'm going to. I'll just roll it back. So I just don't want Miles Bridges being picked there. All right, do it now. I just don't. It's, look, the Jar Morant one got auto picked, but it's not that he goes there in that area in most drafts. So that's why I left that one just to see how a draft plays out, right? Because these teams obviously don't mean anything. Miles Bridges is never going to go in this spot in any draft, and he shouldn't which is why I rolled that one back, just to get a little bit more realism in there. without Because you know, I understood there were some other autos, but sometimes that sort of stuff happens. Uh, and so autos of Miles Bridges will happen as well. Yeah, that's my decision. Buddy Heald goes 107. Yeah, perfectly good spot. Matherin is definitely creeping up in drafts. Valentunas goes, yes, Tom, that's very good from you. This means that the value there of... Steve Adams has to rise now because there is nobody else outside of him and Rob Williams. Why is no one? Why is Rob Williams just everyone completely out on him? We are almost in no risk territory here for Rob Williams. Aaron Gordon should also be going off the board soon. Well, there he goes at one hundred and nine. There he is Steven Adams goes to Ryan, who had a team that was really strong in free throws and took a few iffy guys. Bam. Scoot's not great at free throw. Oh, no, he didn't actually. Take it back. Not many bad free throw guys. In fact, I think his free throws are actually pretty good. They are. I take that back, Ryan. PJ Washington Jr. goes at 111. Interesting. Interesting. So who is Hoop Decks going to do to finish out round eight? A reminder, we are basically in round 10 of a standard draft now, but we still have two starters left to fill out. So that it obviously changes our calculus and decisions that we make. Josh the Hitman Hard at 112. I that Knicks rotation, man, is so hard. It, there's just not enough minutes for the guys that should play, probably unless Thibodeau just cuts Barrett right down, which I really doubt it. It's so hard. They're one of the hardest teams to find minutes for. And I got into an argument, argument with someone. Well, it is an argument when someone comes at me aggressively. First of all, Twitter, they're arguing. I was talking about Brandon Pajemski yesterday, who played really well. And I said, man, I really like this guy, but I don't think he's going to get a good run. And someone said, mate, he's going to be a key bench rotation piece. Um, he's going to get all the run he can in the second unit, champ, is what he said to me. So as an Aussie, you call someone champ, right? It's on. We're fighting. So he said that. I go, oh, cool. He'll do it in his 12 minutes. And I goes, no way, mate. He's getting 20. I go, cool. Work, work out how that's going to happen. He said, oh, yeah. Kaminga, Moody, and Pajemski will get 20 off the bench. That is actually, oh, and Peyton. It's impossible to do. Like, so I went and I studied that Golden State rotation. I just tried to work it out. I see no way, outside of injuries, if you've got a healthy team, there is no way that Pajemski can play 20 minutes a night. And that is the case with so many teams. We might love what Pajemski's doing. He might be their 10th man. 
because he's not going to be ahead of Kaminga. Paul Looney is going to be on the bench. He's not going to be ahead of that guy. Is he going to be ahead of Moody? Gary Payton? Dario Saric? It's, it's hard to find minutes. It's like someone drafted Julian Strouder in one of the drafts yesterday. Yeah, he's looked good in preseason. Absolute best case, he's seventh man for the Nuggets behind Brown. But then there's Peyton Watson. There is Azik Naji. There is Reggie Jackson. He might not be in the rotation at all because Justin Holiday gets it. It's just hard. Tommy, Rob Williams, love your pick. Shaden Sharp feels early. Eh, a little, but I worry about Shaden because I just don't know if there's enough runway for shots. But that Rob Williams pick, man, what? that's the last three mocks where he has fallen probably 30 spots too far. I don't know that he's going to win leagues because he won't. One player usually doesn't do that. But it's a pattern. Paul Reed goes at 118. Ninth best player, is it worth it? I don't know. I am... But I'm going to have the same thing. When I come around to me in round nine, I'm going to take Sohan without knowing whether A, he's going to start or B, be the point guard. It's risky. And then do I, or do I take a safer guy like a herder who's currently dealing with a hammy? I think he should be fine. Josh Richardson, who I don't know is going to start or not. Uh, Trey Jones goes, hmm. When do I take Sadiq Bay and Dennis, Sh- Dennis Schroeder, Kobe White should be... Ooh, Conley goes. Let's throw Kobe. Even though I was... Was I the first to call out Kobe as a good fantasy sleeper pick? Regardless, if I was or not, I don't feel like I've got him in no mocks now that I've said his name, which is what happens. That's We live with it. Um, Sohan's my next guy here. Lively, he's one of my other guys. Covington, he's one of my other guys. I think Covington's going to play. I, I The Clippers? I don't know. The thought to me was that Morris wouldn't be in the rotation. Footage of scrimmage came out today. He's playing with the starters. Ty Lue, I will I will question your ability as a coach if you go back to Morris with the starters. It's crazy. But, like, honestly. Now, that guy didn't auto-draft Trey Murphy, but he did auto-draft Ja Morant. Having them both together is a huge L, I think. Um... The depressed penis goes. All right, so let's take Sohan. Just just for the fact that I want to talk about having Sohan there. Because if he is playing point guard, I'm really going to be interested in what that brings. Now, I'm going to probably take Kobe White on the way back around with my 10th pick. Or, or actually, the other rebound guy who's available, who I don't usually touch in 12s, but for my 10th pick in a 14-team leaguer, if it's Zubats. Just gives me a field goal stability, gives me a rebound stability. Um, Eason goes. See, we're we're getting a little a little upsidey. Can I say that Sohan's an upside guy? Yeah. Okay. Now he is. But we, yeah, I think Zoo, like, ooh, wow, that I don't like. I don't like Quentin Grimes at one twenty seven. I am, and I never do this. I am going to take Zubats there. At 128 in a 12 team league, I don't really think he brings us good value. At 128 in a 14 teamer, I think he does bring us good value. And that's the difference. I wouldn't I I don't think I've even had him touching my queue in any 12 team mock. But it's a bit different here. It's a bit different. Now we can start to get wild. Lively. Covington. Um, who are the other guys that usually get drafted that I talk about? Josh Rich. Oh, well, Lively just went. Richardson goes 129. Lively, 130. Haywood, 131. I am going to put Brandon Miller into my queue. I'm not massively keen on him, but his value increases in a 14-teamer. I'm surprised Anthony Melton hasn't gone. Boyan Bogdanovich should go in this format. I'm surprised Westbrook is still there. Kyle Anderson. Hey, Jaden McDaniels has hurt his calf. Kyle Anderson is going to be valuable early on, so you take him in your draft now. Last pick, he will start and he will have value, even if it's for two games. Jalen Johnson in round 10. This is the risk. That is a perfect pick for Jalen Johnson in a 12-teamer. You are now banking on Jalen Johnson being a starter for you in a 14-teamer. And that is not something I feel like doing. But again, who am I to talk when I'm taking this bloke from San Antonio? It's Jeremy Sohan. (sighs) Malcolm Brogdon. Wouldn't touch him in 12s as my 10th guy in a, in a 14. 
I'm bored with it. Very surprised to see him go ahead of um, Kobe or ahead of Westbrook or ahead of even Jaden McDaniels, who usually goes. And we haven't seen any Jazz guards go yet. No Sexton, no Clarkson, no Horton Tucker, no George. Melton goes next. I guess because there's a little of uncertainty about when they're going to play. Jaden McDaniels falling a ton. Yes, because A, he's not good in category leagues, and now B, he is injured. Although part of the fall has not been to do with the injury. Jaden McDaniels um, injured at the moment. Great value at that spot. Is it though? Where did he go? What pick was it? 135. Actually, it's it's about right. I wouldn't say it's value value. I'd say it's about right for him. Clarkson, 138. The other guy who got injured today, and I haven't seen the severity, is Najee Marshall for the Pelicans. So with Marshall, Alvarado, Murphy out, uh, Dyson Daniels and Jordan Hawkins are going to have to play rotation minutes. Watch that for early season streaming. Cole Anthony, 139. Really like Cole. I really like him. I just The upside is so capped on that team, unfortunately. Oh, the other guy to look at for me is going to be Suggsy because I am very convinced he will start. I'm very convinced he will be a bad shooter, but I'm very convinced he's going to start. But oh, my steals are so in the toilet, though. Maybe I don't need that. Hmm. Where's Bilal? He hasn't gone yet. Ivy goes at 140. No Bilal yet. That is a little surprising. He will go in this round almost without doubt, collaboratively. Bobby Portis, 141. Hate when Portis goes at 108. At 141? Knock it out, mate. I love it. Ivy at 140, coming off the bench, if that's what happens, and it seems like it will, will put a little bit of a capper on what he is able to do. I think round 11, you should be looking at flyers, but also if you want to consider round 11 a starter for fantasy, I think you're fine to do that too. The reason I look at it for flyers is I want to get the guys that I think have got the big upside, and then there'll be a bunch of safer players that fall later on. But if you did take some flyers like Jalen Johnson in round 10, or you went Paul Reed in round 9, or Shaden Sharp in round 9, Getting a little bit more security here with a Bogdanovich, who one of them just went, Bogdan at 142, or a Herb Jones, or a Kyle Anderson, or even a Denny Avdia, is worth it. I am probably, well, there goes Brandon Miller at 143. I'm going to take uh, Calabali at my pick if we get there at 153. Again, just getting interested to see where, what he does. Will they start him over Avdia? We know Wes Unseld's not the biggest Avdia fan from what happened last season. So if Bilal's um, if Bilal is doing what he's doing, Avdi is currently hurt, but I also don't care. Amen's still there too. Pat Williams, I am so out on this bloke as a player. The opportunity is there, but he just never does anything. Maybe I'm getting influenced by um, Mark from uh, CHGO, fellow Melbourne legend, who's just like, why is every player that come in it's like, man, we've, I'm here. I'm really here to push Pat. Like the bloke's in year four. He's a top four pick, yet journeymen continue to push for his position and take his role. And no matter what happens, he never seems to step up. And I go, yeah, that's a real problem. Like he just doesn't seem to do anything. Everyone's supposed to be pushing him and pushing him, but push yourself at some point. So him as a player, the upside, the role, it's all really solid, but bloody hell, do something. Christian Wood at 147. I am very much sour on Christian Wood. We're sliding into Kelton to stop saying names that are not drafted. Capital caps lock. Isaiah Stewart 149. That is draft etiquette 101. Kelton goes at 149. Draft etiquette 101. Kevon Looney 150. Norman Powell. I think Powell's got a real cap on his upside outside of injuries. We're getting to my pick. Do I do I Bob Covington this? Do I boy on it? Do I Kyle Anderson it? Um poor, what do I do here? I am going to Huh. I because oh no, I don't want no, I'm not gonna take Kyle Anderson there. Um oh, let's take Covington. Let's see how that goes. He might not start. I don't know. The next one to look at is Obi Toppin. I saw a pace. I think it was Rep Bauer, actually. It's like, yeah, we're all prepared for Jarris Walker taking Obi Toppin's starting spot, but are we prepared for Aaron Neesmith taking his rotation role? And I went, oh. Obi Toppin has the real risk to me of a Jalen Smith from last season, even an Isaiah Stewart from two years ago, where I look at them and go, I don't think this guy is a good player. I am 
Chris Duarte last season. I don't think this guy is a good player. Sadiq Bey this season, as I talk and it's my pick. Um, 13 seconds. Josh, Josh, Josh. You are talking too much. Let's take um, Suggsy there just to see what happens. Um, I don't know what I was even talking about there. About, yeah, the, the ship players, the guys that I don't think are good. Bay, Jalen Smith, Isaiah Stewart, Chris Duarte. But I go, look, I think the role is there. So I'm projecting them for these minutes and the production. Oh, I guess it comes, but I don't think they're good players. I don't think they're good long-term guys. Um, and I think they're just bad real-life guys who should get overtaken at some point. But I always seem to fall into a trap of like, well, the role seems to be there. They traded for him. The buzz is he's going to start and he does. And then it's 10 games later and they go, oh, yeah, no, he's actually bad. James Wiseman, he's bad. Like, they're bad. And they can't stick in that role. Sadiq Bay, he's bad. And Sadiq Bay will come out and he'll have some big games and he'll go missing. Bol Bol, guess what? He's bad. Cam Thomas, also bad. Little opportunities and pockets open sometimes for players and improvement can always happen. But sometimes we can talk and it's fantasy and we're all, we're all doing this stuff with fantasy. But the real life stuff is important because they might get an opportunity, shout out to Tony Roten, but it goes away when you're bad. It doesn't stick. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with taking Obi Toppin there. Totally fine to do it. Um, Totally fine to take him there. So someone's mentioning about the Marcus Morris stuff. Yeah, that was disappointing. Uh, Taylor Horton Tucker goes after Toppin. boyan has gone. Horford's gone. Schroeder's gone. Um, Sexton's still there or is he gone? Uh, let's have a look. Kyle Anderson, I'm not normally big on him. The role is hard to find, but I am looking here. Can I get two starts, three starts out of Kyle Anderson in week one? Because if I can... He is worth drafting. And then we drop him later on. And that is what I will target at 181. Will Kyle Anderson be there? Almost 100% no, considering he's the second player in this queue. But that's what I'd be doing. And if I was any of these guys, I wouldn't be taking Rowan Barrett or Matisse Thibel. Just take Anderson. Get a little bit of, get something out of it for one or two games. Maybe more. Maybe more. And we're in a 14 teamer, so his value is there too. Karis LeVert should start to go soon. Um, Dylan Brooks, I'm surprised, hasn't gone. And I think somebody should take a flyer, amazing as is, on John Isaac. Who else are we looking at as upside guys? There's not much. We're getting pretty... Or I am going to... Oh, I was going to say, I'm going to put the cum bucket in, but Johnny Kaminga just goes at 165. Caldwell Pope goes at 166. Is that worth it? It pro- actually probably is, because I think his per game value is probably 20 spots higher than that. Well, actually, now I'm looking at my projections. It's not really... KCP shot like 48% from three for three months last season and then 32 for the final three months. The reality is obviously somewhere in the middle. Jared Vanderbilt Bar is currently injured as well, which is not great. They started Torian Prince last game and he played well. Denny Avdia goes at 168. That's good from you, Hoop Dex. I think you did really well getting the value there on Portis and Avdia with those last two picks. Are they high upside guys? No, but we always talk about it. Once they slide 20, 30 spots, the value is is there. It's provided to you. That's 12 rounds done. We've got two more rounds to go. Oh, he did it. He did it, the sneaky bastard. Kyle Anderson, good work. Really like what you did with those couple of picks. That Kyle Anderson pick is smart stuff, I believe. So my team still sits strong in points, rebounds, assists, free throws. Okay in field goals. Okay in threes. Bad in steals. Average in blocks. Actually, average in turnovers as well, somehow. Bowl, bowl, I... Nah, no, 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 no. Nas Reed goes 170, bowl 171. Nas Reed's great if you've got probably, I'd say, five bench spots. I don't know how he's going to get to 20 minutes a night when Gobert and Towns are playing. I don't know how that happens. But when one of them's out, he blows up. Keontae goes at 172. Keontae George, that is. Kelly Oubre might actually be worth it here. What about Dunny? Is he still around? Yeah, I don't... Chris Dunn, at this point, is clearly their best point guard. But will they go that way? I, I can't see how anyone watches. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm not Will Hardy. He's a very good coach. He's better than me, obviously. But I don't know how you can watch Taylor Horton Tucker. Yeah, he's the guy. Like, it's either George for the upside, which he clearly flashes, or Dunn, who's clearly the better player. I don't know. Um, 
Levert at 173 is good from you, Tom the Korean. Are you forgiven from dropping names in the chat? Yes, of course. Dracaris. Chrissy Dunn, there we go, 174. Casey. I could hate some of your picks, but I can like others. Don't like Barrett, don't like Reed, like Bilal, like Chris. Chris Dunn's 29. Can you believe that? 29. <sighs> He was one of those guys early in my fantasy content career that I fought with people about who were like, man, we're drafting him in the 80s. I go, he's playing for Tom Thibodeau as a rookie behind Ricky Rubio. He is never going to play. And that obviously happened. And then the next one was like, hey, Obi Toppin is playing for Tom Thibodeau as a rookie. He is never going to play. I think we need to understand what Tom Thibodeau does to rookies when there are established players there. He doesn't play them. Um, yeah, Hoopdeck says Dunn should be the starting point guard if they want to win games. Yeah, he should. He is their best point guard. Olenek goes at 178. Honestly, if they want to win games, Kelly Olenek's better than John Collins too. Cam Thomas, 177. I'm not going to hate on it. I think he's not good, but fine. John Isaac here, absolutely good as well. And another guy that I don't think is particularly good, but it's going to be my pick coming up. Beasley goes at 179. I think I'm just going to take Kelly Oubre. Or Jaden Hardy do I take? Drummond. Drummond's an interesting one. Um... Do I take Ubre here? Do I take Hardy? The list is pretty th slim. The other one to look at is Gabe Vincent because the Lakers have a very strong week one schedule. And Vincent makes sense. Drummond's the interesting one if you've got deep benches because if Vooch gets injured, he's a top 100 player. And that's unbelievable if you've got the ability to stash him. Now, it's harder to stash him. We've only got four bench guys. But... He's a he, once you get deep with deep benches, he's an unbelievable pick. The other one of those guys is Shake Milton, I think. Uh, Delon goes at one eighty two. I don't love when Delon goes in twelves, but at that spot, no problem. Um, do I take Hardy or do I take Vincent? Hardy's got the upside, and I don't know about Kyrie's injury, so that's why I'm going to take him. Oh, Peyton Pritchard. The other one that's interesting is, as I said, Gabe Vincent, just for week one. So consider Gabe Vincent week one. People don't understand. Oh, Josh taking Uber, things I thought I'd never see. Yeah, I'm never going to take him at 120. I'm at 170, 181 with my pick. I'll take him. I'll take Jaden Hardy there as well. Javon Carter goes one pick ahead. Like these will probably not work out. Uber is a very one-dimensional player who's very frustrating to watch. But I take him there. Ooh, this guy, Drifter Spence. Are you... Hang on a second. What? How? What? How are you knowing exactly what I'm saying? This is not going out live, by the way. How did you do that? I hope that you are not in my Locked On Fantasy Basketball Bowl League because they are both, I believe, sitting at the top of my queue ready to get picked as I just ruined my own strategy for people in that league. Oh, well. That's what happens when you talk too much. Harrison Barnes at 187. Hate Harrison Barnes in 12s, but at that spot, that is literally all upside. I'm sorry. I don't like Harrison Barnes as a player this season for fantasy purposes. That is all upside. This is another one of those ones. Big Dick Nick. If you're in a league with stash ability, Big Dick Nick works very well because Mark Williams goes down and Richards is a top 100 player. That's how you need to approach it. Even like the best ball drafts as well. Like, look to a guy where there is a very clear one-to-one -one replacement. Because sometimes a guy might go down who's a three or a four, and then that means the guy that's the three sifts up to the four, and they sort of spread minutes around. The 20-minute guy off the bench becomes 23. But a point guy goes down, and normally a guy comes in and plays 32 minutes as a replacement. A center goes down, and usually someone comes in and plays big minutes. They are the two positions where you can look for that one-to-one -one replacement very easily. So when you do have stash ability in deeper bench leagues, in weekly format leagues, in roto leagues. They're the guys who you can sit all season. They get a two-week stretch of being a starter and bang, their numbers go up and they're not going to be in that spot where if if I pick a random name out of this list, if, um, I don't even know who a good example is. Like Trey Murphy. Trey Murphy currently injured. Who replaces him? Well, it's a little bit of Herb Jones. It's some Najee Marshall. It's some Dyson Daniels. Um, it's some Jordan Hawkins and no one really steps up and do a large role. If, Someone who is Russell Westbrook goes down. Well, Bones Highland probably starts and plays 30 minutes. Probably. Anyway. Um, 
Uh, Charles Bassey is another interesting one because if Zach Collins goes down, wow. Uh, okay, so after Big Dig Nick went, Rui Hachimura, Christian Brown at 190. Brown's got a terrible fantasy profile, but there is a role there. Bassey, 191. Lowry, 192. Could start opening night. Could start. Divin- uh, Miles Bridges does go at 193. I don't think he's going to play. Lou Dort, 194. Um, and DiVincenzo, 195, last pick. Who is the last selection after Dante? Who could easily be 100 spots better than this Dante? There's just no minutes there. It would take multiple injuries, but this is the change in strategy we talk about in a 14-teamer. We are going an extra 28 spots. Last selection, Hoop Dex goes with Dyson Daniels. All right, with the injuries happening there, I get it. So my team, at pick number 13 in a 14-team nine-category league draft, we went with um, Trey Young at 13, Sabonis in round two, Brunson round three, eight in round four, Jeremy Grant round five, Vassell in six, Jabari Smith in seven, Michael Ponder Jr. in eight, Sohan in nine, Zubats in 10, Covington in 11, Jalen Suggs in 12, Ubre in 13, and Jaden Hardy in round 14. Let's go and have a look at the projected standings over there on Analysis Monster on Basketball Monster. And Drifter Spence, who was following my tactics that I was saying out loud that he couldn't hear, he finishes number one with me number two. I project to beat him head to head, which is a W for me. SD Facky, then Gugu on my wrist, Charles Leclerc, Rolex Leo, Bubble Ring, Hoop Dex, Tom the Korean, Casey Kwok, Dirty Diri, Aim High, Ryan Lacefield, and Nurkic Circus. At the end, I think Nurkic Circus, your numbers. Get dragged down because you took Miles Bridges, and I'm pretty sure I don't project him for any game. So that's partly why you would have got dragged down there. And that, guys, is the end of today's show. Don't forget to follow this podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app and on YouTube. You know what to do. You please thumb it up and you drop your comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.